Yes, hi semi Beth. <laughs> semi new. Well, yeah, yeah. And Norma, you're semi new. I saw you signed up for So Together. Marianne, you've been here every time. So, um, if anyone else wants to shout out with anything, I'll go ahead and answer Jennifer's questions. And it might be a repeat for the rest of you. So I do apologize. But basically, Jennifer, I um, uh, moved here fairly recently to be near son, daughter-in-law and grandsons and was a big sewer, sold sewing machines, taught sewing, all kinds of stuff in Maryland where I'm from and didn't find many uh, resources nearby. The resources I found were a couple of quilting guilds, which um, quilting is what I do occasionally, but they seem to happen always when we're available Sorry. for babysitting. So um, got to know the Montclair Knitting Circle, got into some knitting, but then found out there are sewers. So Michelle at the Edgemont Park uh, said that we could have some time and sew at Edgemont Park, which was great because I needed to, uh, we're in a little apartment now, moved from the big house, a little apartment to be here and needed some big tables and space to pin a quilt, you know, and all that, lay out a pattern. And it's such a beautiful place. We're really, we were talking about, uh, we don't know when we'll get back in there, but what a great place to sew with the windows and the tables and all that kind of thing. And we have uh, sewing machines there and people donate fabric and we share patterns and things. So it's, it's a totally volunteer thing. And I'm just kind of the facilitator. There is a Facebook group, if you'd like to join that. Uh, it's optional. It's called Sew Together Montclair. Um, my email, where did I put that paper? If you want to get in touch with me, I have an email that's so with Sue at gmail.com. So it's S E W W I T H S U E at Gmail. And, um, Last, the first of this series on Zoom happened just a couple of weeks ago, and I demonstrated how to make a tote bag uh, from a, a already existing um, bag. And it is on the Montclair Institute for Lifelong Learning YouTube. You can look up Sew Together class number one, and the whole thing is there if you'd like to catch up with that. I don't, oh, I forgot to ask Michelle. I don't think last times got on there. There was a little bit of technical difficulty getting all signed in and recorded and everything. Um, but uh, we didn't have any specific plans for today, but I'm pretty much open to anything. And we can, um, let's see, from Marion, Marion to everyone, where can I see the chat? Um, chat. I'm having connection problems today, so I have to mute and not have my video on to conserve. I'm an attention smile. Okay, okay, so that's from Mary Ann. Thank you, Mary Ann. Glad you're here. So, did you talk about zippers? Did I yes. miss that one? I did that last time and there, there was quite a bit of technical difficulty. Um, I don't know what happened. People wound up in different rooms. I don't know that much about this Zoom stuff, except sometimes I can use it. But yes, I did talk about zippers and I'd be happy to do that again if anyone's interested. I don't want people to have to sit through it again if uh, they've already done it once, but. Is that in the Sew Together class one, maybe on the YouTube channel? You said it's on lifelong learning? On Mont yeah, Montclair Institute. Yes. If you go to YouTube, and oh, what yeah. I typically type in is uh, Montclair Institute for Lifelong Learning. Yes, okay. Sew Together class one. And that has how to make the tote bag. Oh, okay. 
and it turned out pretty well, I think. Whoever looked at it, I, a few, quite a few people looked at it. I think it turned out really well. But the zipper one is not on there. But I'd be happy to show that again if you like. Or anything else. Um, who's Lily? Yes, Norma? Um, can I just ask you, when you have a pillow that has these um, things, these indents, what do you call them? What do you call these? Like, oh, like they put it has a like the, the button. What is that called, you guys? Um, tufting. Oh, tough. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. I can't, I don't know how to clean them anyway, but I'll find out as long as I know what it's called. Tufting. Tuft. Yeah, T-U-F-T, -T, right, guys? Tufting. Thank Boy, you. I haven't thought of that one in a while. <laughs> well, I, I was trying to get on to tell you, but I was afraid to lose my connection. Um, I, I, you can show the zipper again. I would be happy to watch that if, if that's what everybody, you know, wants. But uh, I thought Norma was going to bring up something about pillows. And, yeah. um, and I'm sorry, I've got something I can't, I can't seem to... There we go. But you can't turn off? I'm trying. I'm trying. That's okay. okay. I'll be right back. I'm going to grab a zipper. Oh, okay. Um, what I was going to ask is there's uh, there are pillows that you can, or pillowcases, that where the, here's the pillow, say, and you fold it over and then sew it. And so that there's no zipper, um, it, it, you know, it's more like an envelope. Yeah. You know, it's, I think it's called an envelope pillow. Uh, yes. You know, and so I wanted to know if you have any tricks or any ideas how to do that more simply. I feel like I, I wind up either shorting myself or there's so much and then I don't, you know. So any, I mean, we could do that the next time or something. We don't have to do it today, but it I think be. we could do both if you guys don't mind. Also, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's pretty simple to show them both. And if it's recorded this time, it'll be on there. If not, I could do a little recording on YouTube and call it uh, so together or whatever, so we could find it. Um, anyone else want to ask the, for a little demo or want to show anything they're working on or anything like that? Um, my question is about bobbins for the sewing machine. How many different types do you have and how accurate you have to be in getting the right type? Oh, that is a good question, Jennifer. You know, I used to sell sewing machines and oh. um, basically I was inside a Joanne fabric store. If you've ever seen a little sewing machine, like piece of carpet or whatever they would be on. But if not, that's what it was. It was in a big Joanne store and I was on a little piece of carpeted area that was the sewing machine store owned by a different company, but in cooperation with Joanne. So we, I had to help people who came in with just, general sewing machine questions, as well as sell and uh, help people maintain and teach them how to use the ones they had. One of the biggest problems was having the wrong bobbin. It is almost impossible to use a machine properly with, it is impossible with the wrong bobbin. So um, one of the things I tell people is if you have the instruction book, or if you can find, a lot of times you can find them for free online. They might tell you what kind you need. Uh, well, I was just in Joanne's uh, the other day and I bought, they only had two types, the plastic and three types, and then two metal ones. The one was flat and the one was kind of rounded a little bit. So that was the only choices I had. I got the flat one, the flat, flat metal one. Do you have any idea, Jennifer, if you have one that is totally appropriate for your machine? It looks just like the one that came with the machine. It's a, a brother. Okay. So I haven't tried it yet because I just got it and opened it. So I'll try so, sewing, sewing with that. But I did use the plastic bobbins before and it just didn't work for me. It kept on just messing up. Yes, that's exactly what will happen. It will be so frustrating. So if you are using the ones that you bought, they're probably fine. What's gonna happen is they have to be the same size and diameter, the same height. They have to be flat. 
or curved or whatever, just identical to the ones that came with your machine. And if you have problems, you need to get with the manufacturer. And a lot of times you can chat or email them or text them or whatever, or talk to somebody and find out because it, it makes all the difference. And I would take the one that came with the machine and somehow identify it. You know, if you would take your, I like to take a Sharpie, you know, and put dots on things or, you know, something that's going to really remind you about that. Okay, Jennifer, thank you. Jennifer, did you get your machine just new now or did you buy it used? No, no, it's a second-hand uh, machine that I got on uh, Craigslist or something. You still so, have a model number on it though, right? Yes, it does. So what I did when I got this machine is I looked up online. Uh, this is a Brother 1000 or whatever it is, Bobbins, and, and you'll get what you need that way, being specific by model number. Oh, okay. All right. Well, Joanne's was the only one place that I ever went to. So, but if no, I order it yeah. online, I guess I'll get the the proper one. Yeah, you can just go to the manufacturer online if it's a brother as well, and just see what they have to say. Okay. They're very they're they're very complete in their supplies. I found. Yes. Yes. And usually, when you buy something on Craigslist or whatever, they're going to give you the original equipment that came with that. Yes. Most of the time, people are good with that. So if you got those and they're the, they look exactly the same and they're working properly, I would say you're not having any problems. That's good. Thank you. I have a, may I have a question about this machine since you're talking about that. This is Claire. I am. Um, hi. Hi. Um, I have a very old machine. It's um, one that is a piece of furniture. It's a Kenmore. Hasn't been used in many years. Is it? Is it possible it still works? <laughs> I mean, yes. it, worked when it, it worked the last time it was closed down, and then it hasn't been. And uh, um, what, where do I start with? I mean, I, I used to sew. I haven't sewn in years and years and years. So that's why I went on this just to listen. Maybe it'll encourage me. Uh, I first have to get this machine going. So what do, where do I start with that? Sure, sure. Well, first of all, welcome. Thank you. And um so this is a lot of what I did. People would bring in their old machine to the Joanne store inside the sewing store and say, help. And we did have a repairman that would come pick them up, work on them and bring them back. And sometimes the machine was just not worth repairing and he would tell them. And uh, sometimes it would be just like, well, how much is a new one? And, and how much are you gonna use it and whatever? So what I'm gonna ask you is, when was the last time this machine was used? Uh, before my mother died, so probably 17 years. Okay. So just like, uh, think of any motor, like a, like a car, if mm -hmm. it sits and is not used, um, there is, it's not uh, automobile oil, but it is machine oil that's in there and it's likely hardened. And uh, I don't know how you say it, stale, dark, dirty, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and she probably, if she suddenly had something happen where she stopped using it, she probably mm -hmm. did not have it serviced right before she packed it away. Yeah. No, I doubt That's it. typically what happens. Yeah, it's right. usually kind of a sudden thing. Um, so what I would do is personally, I would take it to or call first a place called So Jersey. And what town is that in, you guys? I always forget. East Hanover. East Hanover. No, East Hanover, I think. East right. Hanover. And you said that last time, yeah. Yes, East Hanover. I said that last time. I just can't remember the name of that town for some reason. But anyway, yes. Um, I would call them and tell them what model it is in this situation and see how much they charge. Now, sometimes the fixing of it is not uh, sensible because you only want something to do a couple little things uh, temporarily here and there, and you can get one for $200 or $170. You can get mm -hmm. a little brother at uh, a discount store or online, very inexpensively. And you might say, well, it's not worth it to put that kind of money into mom's old machine. Or mm -hmm. it could be, you have to realize that mom's old machine could be the type that would last through the generations. You would have to have a repairman tell you. So it could be um, worth the the money to get it repaired and looked at. And and um, usually what they're going to say is you have to bring it to us. He'll look at it and you can put on the repair ticket. Please call me before you do anything and tell me blah, blah, blah. Um, 
they can come out of the cabinet. You don't yeah. carry the whole cabinet. No, I couldn't do that now. I mean, they could come out. Okay, that was my other. It's easy to take out and that won't ruin it. Okay. Um, you might need to go like on YouTube or whatever for help with that. Usually they kind of, you open the top and the machine bends forward and you can right. see there's like a place where these little posts go in the frame and you unscrew those and lift it up. You probably need two people because one person has to, you know, hold on the machine so it doesn't fall as you're undoing those screws or whatever. Mm -hmm. It depends on the, how it goes in. And then, um, you know, you can decide from there. Right. The other thing, if you need a machine and you want help with it or you want to know whatever, they do sell them at that place. Mm -hmm. So okay. um, do they have any um, historical value? I don't know what the word is, you know, antique value at a certain point or not really. No, the only machines. Things. Yeah. The only machines I know of that have that type of antique historical value are called Singer Feather Weights. Oh, yeah. OK. Uh, the quilters, uh, especially around Virginia and Maryland area where I grew up, love these little tiny singers that come in these perfect little boxes and you carry oh, them yeah, to your quilt uh, class and they only do a straight stitch, blah, blah, blah. And then the only other time that things seem to have value is if it's like I do have my, did have my great grandmother's old metal singer. Oh, that um, um, will never die if you take care of it. You know, it just needs a periodic and it'll go through anything. Mm, you know, mm -hmm. it'll go through sailcloth, it'll go through, you know, it's just a pop, it only goes forward and reverse. But um, I gave that to my cousin's daughter because she's into sewing also. And uh, anyway, there's a family connection there, which, which makes it right. valuable to yeah, us. Yeah, that's what it's too, sure. Yeah, but other than that, no. Okay. Yeah, right. thank, thank you. you. That you really got me someone. started in you know thinking about direction. I appreciate it. That I don't want to take the time from you're actually doing the lesson, but since they no, were talking it's about not it, a lesson. it's not yeah. a lesson, Claire. It's I don't know a what you do. Group oh, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know if they were all going to be sewing something together. Or... So, the, so the name of the place to take my uh, machine to for just the general uh, oiling and just to make it run smoother because I'm having a problem turning the side wheel. Would be this, what's the name of the place and about how much would it cost to do that? Now, it's called So Jersey, two words, S-E-W, uh -huh. Jersey. It's in East Hanover. Um, and actually, for those of you that have been there before, I did get an email from them that they're moving oh. to a nicer place. In East Hanover? So you really need to look them up online and call them. As far as the cost goes, it should be under a hundred dollars, but it totally, I mean, in Maryland, it, it depends. You just have to call and tell them your model and ask them what they think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank um, you. Yeah. And for, for basic issues about the machine, um, even older machines, you can go online to YouTube and put the model in. And there'll be people demonstrating how to thread it, how to wind a bobbin. There's even a guy I posted on our Sew Together Montclair Facebook page. That was great. Wasn't it, Norma? I see you with your thumbs up. Uh -huh. He's going through all this information uh, about um, repairing your machines and how they work. and not. So it's, it's very interesting. And of course, you just want to get to know your model, most likely, and how to keep it running. Yep. Anyone else have a question or something to share? And and um... I've got to mute myself. Okay. So um, yeah. So basically, a couple people have asked me to show how to put a zipper in my simple dimple way, and the other one I should have written down. Oh, how to do the envelope pillow. Okay. So I'll start out with a zipper and. Um, let me see if I can get my iPad. Excuse me for a minute. I should. Let me stop my video a minute so I don't give you guys a headache. Uh, putting my iPad on the holder. It's uh, it wibble wobbles till I get it set. So I'm putting that in my holder and make sure. Okay, so. Can you see my sewing machine and my table? Mm -hmm. So
So I have some fabric here. And I have a zipper. And someone asked me last time what you call this type of zip zipper install. And um, I honestly don't remember that it has a specific name. Well, where's the correct type of zipper? Hold on. Oh, I dropped it. Here it is. Here we go. Now this is a technique that I used to show a lot in my classes using a regular polyester um, zipper. You sewed in the past, we always used to use these in our class when you had to make a skirt, <laughs> uh, home ec or whatever. And what you wanna do here is pick a zipper for this easy sneezy technique, pick a zipper that is longer than your fabric. So I'm just gonna do quick and dirty for you. If I'm gonna make a pocket that is I'm trying to see how you can see me. Oh, there I am. Can you see this white, whitish yeah. square? Yeah. Great. Now this can be used to make like a zipper bag. like this, that just has a zipper on the top and then it opens up, you can put things inside. It can also be made, used to make a pocket with a zipper. Here's another one I made with uh, flip-flop fabric. Uh, if you watch the tote bag, YouTube on the Inst Montclair Institute for Lifelong Learning. I did the box bottom on this one and I put water inside and flip flops. And it also can be used to make a simple top stitch pocket. So this is another application for it. Everybody see that okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So here's two squares. And my zipper that is longer than they are, oops, this one. And I wanna look at the zipper and see that, and maybe, I don't know if you can see it on better on one of these others, short ones. There's a zipper pull. This is the right side of the zipper. This is the wrong side. Back in the old days when I was in Girl Scouts or some of us talked about 4-H before, they have in the twill tape between the zipper teeth and the edge, there's like a different weave that gives you kind of a guide of where to sew. The modern zippers don't really have this. So what I often do is take my marking equipment. In this case, I have a black zipper. So I'm going to use um, a white color and I'm going to come in a quarter of an inch. Please, please move closer to the machine so we can see you. Tell me if this is better. Yes. Can you see the black zipper? Okay. Thank you. Please, please keep giving me um, input. 
Uh, so this is the front side and this is the back side. And I'm going to sew on the wrong side of the zipper in this technique. And I wanna have a guide. And since they're no longer woven into the seam tape, I'm gonna draw a line, contrasting line, about a quarter inch from the edge. I'm gonna eyeball it right now, but I have a little uh, you know, measuring tape, I can measure that. So I'm just gonna come a quarter inch in and just draw a line. Try to make it dark enough so you can see. So here's my zipper that's too long with my mark on it. The way you start this is you have your zipper closed. And if I want my zipper on this top edge, and what I would do, if, you, if you're already a seamstress, you would know this, I'm gonna take and finish this edge, this raw edge in some way unless I'm lining the pocket, you know, I could zigzag, I could uh, use pinking shears, I could, if I have a serger, I could serge this to keep it from raveling. I'm gonna take the zipper and place the finished edge, top of the pouch bag pocket and put it right up against the top of the fabric. Now you can use uh, straight pins, or you can use these little clips, which I've talked about before. And I want these two edges to match up. I'm only going to sew basically where the fabric is. It's okay if I go over a little bit. And in order to sew a zipper, does anybody know what I need for my machine? Zipper foot? Yeah, zipper foot and a straight stitch. So let me turn this baby on. Can you see the sewing bed? Yes. The, where my hand is? Good. Perfect. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> <laughs> the lucky duck move. All right. So I'm going to find my zipper foot, which should be right in the little bag. Ah. Oh, here it is. I keep all my stuff really carefully together. What, you know, it's a, what, just like the bobbins you were talking about, we were talking about earlier, the feet are the same way. You need the right type of foot for this machine. So I'm gonna remove the regular stitch foot and put on the zipper foot. which should be explained in your book or you can find a video online or whatever. And let's see, how am I doing this? The foot, um, you wanna make sure the needle's gonna go kind of where that line is, parallel to that line. And I usually put my piece underneath my press her foot down and then sink the needle and make sure it's in the right place. If it's not, you can adjust it um, according to your machine, uh, the way you want it to be. Um, mine has buttons. Can you see the needle moving to the right and to the left? Yes. No? Yes, good. Yeah. So my mine does that by buttons and I wanna turn it by hand. When Personally, when I change a foot, I test it by turning the hand wheel by hand to make sure that my needle's not gonna break when I hit the foot. Um, ask me how I know about that one. So anyway, I'm gonna go forward and backward. And there's like a place on my foot here that is, is also a guide. It rides right up against the lump that is created by these teeth. But it's basically a straight stitch watching this guide. Mm 
and parallel to the line that I've made or right on the line, whatever. Of course, I have to cut my threads. Those of you that have seen me before, I'm like a, do not like the threads hanging. Anyway, so now once I have this done, I wanna make sure that the zipper pull moves. Now, because my zipper is too long, I have my zipper pull up here. So I didn't have to go around the bump of the zipper and have it be crooked. Didn't have to worry about hitting any metal. It's a polyester zipper teeth. And I just make sure that my pull goes back and forth. Oh. So this is one side of my bag or my po pocket or pouch. Now I'm going to take the other one, the other piece of fabric, if you can see that, let's see. Okay. And I'm going to put, this is the right side of the zipper, right side of the fabric. I'm gonna put right sides together and pin or clip. I think one of them went on the floor, of course. And then I'm gonna turn this over and once again, do the same thing. I'm gonna look at the edge of the zipper tape and my, you know, should be finished edge of my fabric. And I'm going to do the same thing. And so, now this time, because I've done it so many times and because I know my foot, on this machine, I'm gonna follow the place I know where my teeth need to be on the foot. Once you get um, once you get comfortable and you watch different people do these things, you learn their tricks or you come up with your own. You might even explain in your user's manual how to do this properly. And I so fast because I can. Speed does nothing to help you though. If you need to sew slowly, sew slowly. Speed comes with comfort. It's not a necessity. All right, so now that I've done it on this side, I open it up and there's my zipper. Everybody can see that okay or no? Yes, yeah. Okay. So, and I can move this back and forth easily. Now it's an option if you would like, you can top stitch this down. I'm not gonna do that right now. You could even do some decorative stitches along here. I've seen people make really pretty zipper edges that way. And this is not a garment. This is a, what I could call a craft or a bag zipper. Mm -hmm. Now, we were talking about, um, originally we were talking about making the zippered bag, the little pouch. To do that, what you're going to do next is put your right sides back together. You need to make sure with both of these applications, sorry, let me go back one, that the zipper pull is open. If I sew the sides of this and my zipper pull is outside, I'm not gonna be able to open and close my zipper. So open the zipper, fold and pin these together and I'll just switch this to a basting stitch. Let's see, make my, so I can take it out and then show you the other way. My feet luckily just snap on and off. We're all just, Find my all-purpose foot, snap that on, tuck my thread under and back, and I'm going to match up this part where it's open, teeth up, tape down, and sew a, a regular seam, whatever your pattern called for or whatever you like. I usually do like a half an inch on home deck and crafts and five eighths on um, garments and a quarter inch on uh, quilts. 
turn. Turn. I'm not paying a lot of attention, you guys. You. And when up to the tape, up to the teeth and backwards. Now, I'm not gonna do it right now, but so I'm gonna probably use this zipper for something else one day. When I go back to the zipper, there's the hole to turn it right side out. Mm. Okay. And I pull everything through the hole, tuck it in, poke out my corners. Hmm. Arthritis isn't too bad today, that's good. <laughs> okay, so here's a little pouch. Here's my little zipper. Nice. And that's one way to use this zipper application. Now, if I were to leave this a bag and not go on with a different demonstration, I would go here and usually sometimes with a zigzag on the machine or just by hand, I would whip stitch right where the seam is to replace the metal stopper. Mm -hmm. And the same thing on the other side, whip stitch and then cut. You can cut these polyester zippers with your paper craft scissors. Anybody have questions on that? No, it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. <laughs> Is that Sharon? Yes, I'm here. Yay, I'm glad you're seeing it. Good, good, good. Yeah. Sharon was the one that originally asked for this a few weeks ago. Now, I'm going to take this basting out real quickly and show you how to do the pocket on the bag. Okay. So, So we're back here to this point where I first had my zipper in and my two pieces. Now, it does have a piece of fabric at the top and a larger piece at the bottom. And I'm just gonna cut this off. This is, this is the size I would have originally cut my fabric if I were doing a pocket piece. Mm. You do the zipper install the same way but this time having my zipper open, I'm going to either sew with the sewing machine or whip stitch with my thread, the two stops to replace the metal ones and cut this. Mm -hmm. Now to put this in um, on the bag and I'll just do it on the opposite side. Oh, that's pretty too. So no, I'll just... No. Question, could you just angle the camera towards your hands because it's showing a lot of the right side of the machine. Thank you, is that better? Is this better? Yes. yes. I'm sorry, I think I'm wobbling. My holder has a bit of a wobble to it. Okay, good. Yes, thank you for that. I really appreciate that. So, so I would- I, So I do have a question about um, something you just said uh, a little while ago, uh, five ace on quilts. That's the seam allowance. Oh, five days five, on then go ahead. Let, let, yeah, let me say that a little slow, more slowly. <laughs> when I'm doing home deck or bags or craft or pillows, I do half inch seams. The typical seam written into a pattern for garments is five eighths. That's for garments, five eighths. For quilting, it's one quarter inch seams. Okay? Okay, thank you. All right, sure. So, just to make it visual here, I'll take a yellow thread. Now, of course, I would use black with this black zipper, but I'm just gonna, oops. And I'm not gonna do this permanently, guys. I'm just kind of showing you. So I would add a thread stop here. 
And same thing on the other side. So it's that zipper pull that's going to have me kind of confused. If it's not on the inside and you leave it on the outside, you're going to do all that work and have to take it out again. Yeah, that's when you get out your stitch remover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you've got to make sure that your zipper pull is in the middle. Yes. Okay, so let's pretend I made these nice, neat uh, little threads here on the end. And let's pretend I cut this nice long zipper I don't want to cut today. And you tuck your edges in mm -hmm. and you can pin or you can use something called wash away tape. Now, something else too, I would go to the iron. I would cut this, go to the iron and carefully measure and turn under my quantity whatever, probably a half an inch in this case. And I would have this whole thing tucked under. Now you can hand baste it. You can um, press it with the iron. Right now I'm doing a little finger pressing and you just place it where you want on your bag. Zipper's already trimmed, of course, pretend it's not there. <laughs> and you just top stitch this down. You can sew over the, uh, polyester teeth. However, as uh, someone reminded me last time, hand walk your wheel when you're doing that. And then you have your um, Can you see the machine here? Yes. Yes. And then you just top stitch this down. Oh, I gotta move this a little more to get to my foot pedal. Here we go. Can you see that? Yes. Good. So then you just top stitch. When you get to the teeth, just stop and turn the wheel by hand. It will sew over the teeth, the polyester teeth. Do not do this with a metal zipper. Ask me how I know. <laughs> And then you have your pocket on the outside. Good. Oh, that's good. Okay. okay. So let me grab my, uh, my cool bag and show you how it looks on there. Can you oh, see yeah. that? Okay. Wow. So it's a, that's nice. Yeah. It's a brown zipper that coordinates with the scraps I used and all top stitched down. And there's your pocket. Nice. Wow. You like that zipper treatment? Yes. Ooh. Thank that you. That was beautiful. Thank good, you. good. I'm glad you like that. It's, it's simple and it's effective. And, um, you know, of course for garments or other things, it's a whole different shoot match, but that's that. Um, Let's see. If there's no questions on that, I'll go ahead and show how I would do the envelope pillow without a zipper. Okay. Okay, all right. I'll just find some fabric. Hi, Sharon, I'm back. Hey, how was your trip? Wonderful. <laughs> I that went for a COVID test this morning because <laughs> I have a procedure next week. Uh oh. <laughs> How long before you hear your results? I think a, a day or two. They're going to send it to the doctor. And uh, if it's negative, then they'll go ahead with the procedure okay. on Wednesday. We'll see. <laughs> hmm. Hope it's nothing too serious. 
No, hopefully not. We'll see what they find out. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be fine. We'll be in our prayers. Thanks. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So I want to make a square pillow. Okay. And what I would normally do is take two squares, mm -hmm. put them together, sew around, leave a hole, turn it right side out, whip up the hole. And if I need to wash it, I've got to undo all that stitching and everything. Um, or maybe I'm just making a temporary cover mm -hmm. uh, for a pillow. So rather than that, I will cut three pieces of fabric. Now I'm sure somewhere online are the exact measurements, but because I'm often winging it anyway, I'm gonna go about, so I wanna go beyond half of the pillow, right? Mm -hmm but not too far. I want a little bit of an overlap, but not too much. So I'm gonna come over to about here. I'm, I'm not seeing all of the, I'm seeing a lot of green on your table. Nope, to Thank your- Thank you. Uh, uh, no, a little bit, no, to your, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's it, perfect, perfect. Is Great. that good for Thank everybody you. else? Is that good for everybody else or no? I don't know, you keep talking and we keep seeing you. Uh, and now we have Sharon <laughs> Flower Pot. <laughs> okay, I'm going to talk now, and you see if you can see this. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Put your thumbs up or down or whatever. Look, I see a thumbs up. That's okay, good. good. That's good. Uh, so I had this about two-thirds of the um, coverage of the pillow, and I'm going to cut a second one the same size. So I have two pieces for the back that will overlap. Now, because I need a finished edge here, I cut it, the two thirds is going to be more width than you need to get the pillow in and out because this has to be a very good and secure finish. So in doing the edges of the back piece, I'm going to fold a good hem, double hem. So that's taken up quite a bit of the um, width of these strips. So I'm gonna put my front piece aside. There's my machine. Ah, where'd my pedal go? Here it is. Okay. And I'm going to just, I would normally press this on the machine, on the uh, iron. I do a lot of pressing normally when I sew. And I'm just going to do um, straight stitch along the fold here. This is something if you haven't sewn in a while that I learned in quilting, you can do something called chain on stitching. Once you start sewing on the one piece, you can do a few stitches in the air, so to speak, and then go on to the next piece. <clears throat> I don't care in this case about forward and reverse because this is going to be enclosed in the main seam of the pillow. So now I take my front, you know, I'm dyslexic or something with this camera. <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. looking in the mirror. Yeah. You're <laughs> doing fine. You're doing Thank good. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I'm going to take, here's my two shorter pieces with the finished edges. And of course the finished edges need to overlap. And I'm going to put that on the front. 
Pin around. I still have my straight stitch. Overlap my stitching a little bit so it doesn't come apart. Oop. And I would trim all that up nicely. So I've just sewn around the square, not where my finished hems are. And going through here, I turn this right side out. Oh, here's a trick. Uh, sometimes if you have real heavy like home deck fabric, you need to trim away the corners, um, which is good to do. But if you have lighter weight fabric, you can make a very crisp corner by doing this little folding technique. You turn the fabric, fold it along the seam line. And the one up above the what is that? The other seam that's at the 45 degree angle, same thing. So you have this little fold right where the seams are. You put your finger in and pinch with your thumb. And when you pop this out, you have like a perfect little corner almost. Wow. So it's fold, fold, pinch and pop. Fold, fold, pop. So, so that takes the place of when we used to cut the corner, like clip the, remember years ago, they have you in sewing class, they used to make us clip the end, clip it like on an angle before you tucked it in. So now we just got to fold, fold. Absolutely. Now there are going to be some fabrics or techniques where you still want to clip. Okay. Um, if it's a heavier home deck fabric and it's a pillow cover, you might need to clip. Um, this one, having a little extra fabric in that corner is actually going to keep my pillow corner stand out a bit and be filled. You know, have you ever done pillow covers and then the, the corners so floppy? Mm -hmm. I haven't done one yet, but I... I imagine it would be floppy, you know. Mm -hmm. That how so, keeps it more tight, stiff. Yeah. So with this one, you actually have some fill in there to keep the corner sharper after you're finished. But there are some times... You still need to clip those corners. Okay. But Thank you can you. see now where, sure. Thanks for the question. Okay. Um, you're just going to slip your pillow in this place and mush it in there, you know, and then you've got your little protection. And it's only going to be a couple of inches really here. And you don't want to make it too tight. If you make it too tight, it's going to want to keep pulling apart. So you want to make sure that it's the you know, it's the actual size rather than making it a little too small. You mm -hmm. know, so I, I, you know, and these, especially if I'm going to cover a pillow I bought at the store, these pillows are not always perfectly square. So I measure them mm. from seam to seam both ways. And sometimes mm. it's like 15 and a half inches this way and 16 inches that way. You know, so. now, I've, I've seen them and I've, I've tried it where the, the overlap is a little longer. 
you've got it pretty, you know, you only have a little bit of a few inches. Yeah, and this is a small pillow. Yeah. Um, you can be longer, but then it gets really hard to put the pillow in. Yeah. If you make it too long, yeah. Um, then okay. you're ripping that out and shortening it. But <laughs> now it's like I said, there I'm sure there are specific instructions on the internet for exactly the dimension. Usually I'm just winging it. Um, but it, I'll look for that if you want. And if I find no, it. No, that's fine. Thank you. I can certainly do. So, so, okay. so any other questions on that one? No? Okay. Thank you. No problem. My pleasure. Let's see. Who joined us since we started? Sharon's here. I think everyone else is still the same. Some people we can't see their picture. That's okay. We're glad you're here. Um, I wanted to tell you guys, I'm also, whoops. My grandson is four, the oldest one, and is uh, very creative. And have you guys, if you have little ones, have you heard of the show called... Oh. Um, have uh, uh, called um, octonauts. No, <laughs> no. Now, there's this really cute show, and there's books about it, and they have all these little sea creatures. So I found these free patterns online. You know, you get on there and Pinterest and stuff, and you go down a rabbit hole. And so I'm going to make some little um, sea creatures for him. I've got some felt online 